In this tutorial, we're going to cover adding a sales page. If you haven't yet watched the other tutorials on adding expenses and traffic sources, I recommend that you go and do that first before you continue watching this tutorial or any of the others, because I'm going to continue on the simple model that I've built here that you see on screen with an opt-in page and the thank you page. and We've got some traffic coming in. So you want to go watch those on how I built this and why. But now we're to the point of adding a sales page. As we've seen over here, down the right hand side, we're losing $13,500 a month or $162,000 a year in our little model that we've built here because we've added a bunch of traffic that we're paying for. It's costing us $8,500 a month. We've got some other, other expenses now. We added that overhead expense of $5,000. So I think we need to start selling some stuff or this little business of ours is probably not going to last very long. So to add a sales page, it's very simple. You're just going to drag a sales page object onto the canvas. You can also have a sales page that's connected within a webinar campaign, but you want to watch the tutorial on webinars because that's a little bit different to set up in Giro because you're going to have to have a registration page. Then you have an object that represents whether the webinar is live or it's a replay. And then with that, you have a webinar sales object, which will represent sales coming during the either recorded or live event. So that's the other way to sell products and have the calculations done in Giro. But we're just going to stick to a basic sales page, a landing page that sells a product or service, which is for most models that at least aren't using a webinar process. So in looking at our model here, we have an opt-in page and then a thank you page. 50% uh, of the traffic takes this yes path. They opt in. They're going to continue and land on this thank you page. Now, really, the thank you page doesn't really have a yes path because there's no action being taken on a thank you page. They're not clicking a link and so they're yes, they're continuing down the path. Really that yes is just kind of a catch all for all the traffic that lands on the thank you page will then continue on because they've now joined like the email list for this model and they're going to receive any of the emails that we send. So really what we're going to do here to kind of continue this model and keep it simple, we're going to add an email message because hypothetically this email message is going to go out right after they join the list and that email is going to immediately just contain a link that sends them to a sales page. Say, hey, thanks for opting in for the free golf report. You should check out this amazing you know, course that I sell for you know how to get started with golf. Um, so let's say that um, this, we'll just call this a welcome email and we'll say we get a super high click-through rate just to keep the math simple um, because these people just opted in let's say half the people that opted in get this email and immediately go oh what's this they click the link and they continue on uh, to a sales page so now we just go to the menu we click the sales page object we bring it onto the canvas and you'll notice a connected order form automatically comes with it that's because every sales page, of course, has to have an order form, uh, you know, kind of checkout process. And so that's done just for convenience. You can delete the connection of the sales page to the order form uh, and you can delete the order form, uh, but the numbers won't process unless you actually have that order function of what the order form does. So now that we have these two, I can uh, highlight them both. I'm going to bring them over here, connect them to our email. And so basically, half the people come to the landing page and opt in. Then of all those people, only half of them are going to click on this email and end up on our sales page. So that's really down to about 25% of our visitors. And realistically, it would be even less than that because not half the people are going to, you know, of course, open and actually click a link in an email. But we're going to keep this model simple just to keep the math simple. So this is our sales page. So let's sell these people something. So a pop-up here comes up. I actually clicked it and deleted it there too fast. So now let's sell these people something. So we click on the sales page here and we're going to bring up the settings for it. You know, you can edit a page name. We can just call it our, you know, sales page. We didn't call it anything else. What's our sales page conversion? So of the number of people that go to this page, what percentage are going to place an order? Um, let's keep the math really simple and say 10%. Typically sales conversions are lower than that, but let's keep the math simple. Now what we need to do is to add the details 
for our product. So let's call this Beginner's uh, Golf Course. This will be an online course. We're going to sell this at, let's say, 197 It's going to be a one-time price. Uh, we'll say the refund rate is 4 5% and the product, we'll say it has zero cost because it's an online digital course, just to keep the number simple. So if we do that and click save, that's how fast we've just added this product to that sales page. One out of uh, every 10 people that come to the sales page will buy it because the 10% conversion rate and they're gonna buy it at 197 uh, and they're gonna pay one time, but 5% of our sales are going to result in refunds. Now let me show you what these other settings are, which because you're probably wondering what's this other stuff that he didn't cover. Pricing type, you can do it monthly or yearly. So if you have a subscription product, SaaS service, membership site, anything else, you could set this to monthly or yearly. Now if you did for recurring billing, and you, as soon as you set that to monthly, now we see a new field that comes up called stick rate. What stick rate is, it's the average number of terms, which in this case months, would be the average number of months that the customer that buys this would pay. Because if you sell, let's say, a membership site at $50 a month, your users aren't going to buy it and pay for 100 years. The average person, when you run all the math in your business, you'll find there's a certain duration before people cancel. Like typically in membership sites or a lot of subscription products, it's common for a stick rate to be about three and a half months. You know, three to four months is how long somebody on average will pay before they cancel. So if your average for whatever model you're building here is four months, you'd put a four here. If they average end up paying one full year before they cancel, then you'd put 12 here if you have it on monthly. If your subscription service or membership site, let's say, isn't billed monthly, but it's billed yearly, then you could put it on yearly and you could say, on average, how many years do they stay? If it was one year, you would just keep this at one. If it's two years, again, it's two times the duration of when the price is charged. So you need to set a stick rate if you're going to do recurring charges. But let's go back and keep it simple. We'll put on a one-time charge. So this, they're going to buy this online course, $197, and that's it. Now here's where we get a little bit more advanced and I hope I don't lose you. So most marketing funnels that are going to be set up in Giru are going to be single product sales object funnels. And in most marketing funnels, it is best just to sell a single product from a sales landing page. So if you have more than one product in your business, it's usually best to send traffic to different sales pages so you can have different types of traffic campaigns targeting different types of targeted visitors. So let's say this golf company, this hypothetical model here that we're building, let's say it sells a beginner's golf course and then it also has an intermediate golf course. You know, if someone's an education course, if someone's an intermediate level golfer and they wouldn't be interested in the beginner one, but they'd buy the intermediate one. Well, we may not want to sell, actually we probably don't want to sell the beginner course and the intermediate on the same page. So we would set up a separate mini funnel for traffic going to sell specifically the intermediate course and of course this one for the beginners course. However, Gear allows you to have more than one product being sold on a sales page. So you can come into here and you'll see the drop down. We only have one added right now, so you're only seeing this one. But we can hit this plus symbol and we can add the next product. So we can add more and more products to the sales page. You can add up to five. So if you wanted to have this sales page sell five different products, you know, then this could be product two. We could go ahead and add product three. And as you're adding those, you'll see them in the dropdown. So to set the settings for the different ones, that's how you would jump back and forth. You'll see them in the drop down. So we've now added five products on this sales page. What you also see here that I didn't cover yet, you see product sales split percentage. 
What this means is of the number of people that come to the page that buy, which is one out of 10, because we've set the sales conversion to 10, on average, when an order is placed, what's the breakdown for the products? For example, let's keep it simple and just say we only have two products. So we're gonna delete this one. We're gonna, we're gonna delete number five. We're gonna delete number four. And you can see you just click that X once one's highlighted to get rid of it. Now we have two. So we're just gonna keep the two products. So for beginner, you know, what's the product split? So if we say 80% here, then when we come over here to product two, you'll automatically see it's 20% because it has to add up to 100. What that means is of every sale that happens on this page, when the average person you know, buys these products, 80% of the sales are for the beginner's course, 20% of those sales would be product two, whatever that would be. So if you have three products, you have to set the split that will add up the math for all three and so on and so forth. Now, again, this is a more advanced feature. You may not want to use it unless you specifically have a business or model that's selling more than one product from the same sales page. I don't mean an order bump or an upsell or back end or anything like that. I mean from the same landing page. So let's keep it simple though. We're just going to have one product and it's going to be this beginner's golf course. It's going to cost 197. We can just set this to 100. Whoops. It's going to be 197. That's what everyone's going to buy. And it's a one-time price of the 197. It's not a recurring charge with a 5% refund. And we're going to have no cost. Let's just say it doesn't cost anything because it's a digital course. So we're going to save that. Now what you'll notice, the magic is kind of happening over here on the right-hand side. Our merchant fees have automatically been calculated for all those sales that are coming to that sales page. Um, and if you watch the tutorial on Canvas project settings, I'll show you how you can set the merchant fee rate. We're using the default Stripe rate since so many people use Stripe, which is 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction. But you can change those to whatever you want. And so the other, this is our refunds actually being calculated now. And so Basically, what we're seeing here, now we're starting to see a breakdown of how the expenses and costs are broken down. And we also start seeing now the most important metrics now being calculated, which we didn't see before. We now have an EPC. So for every visitor that comes into the funnel and lands on the opt-in page, they're worth $4.93. The cost per lead to get an opt-in is $1.55. It's costing us $30.91 to acquire a customer. And now we have monthly revenues of $54,000. We're making 41,000 of that in profit. And then here's the yearly numbers of 650,000 a year or 496,000 in profit. The other thing you'll notice on the order form is it defaults to a 100% checkout rate. Now that's not realistic either. You can keep it that way just to keep math simple, to simulate numbers and build a hypothetical model. Typically, checkout rates can be anywhere from you know 50% to 80%. It just all depends on how much the product is, how the marketing is, if people go to the order page and then they just bail out and they don't complete their order. But if you change this percentage, as you can imagine, it will automatically change the total sales and the number of sales by product uh, based on what the checkout rate is. So if you, you know, lower this to 80%, you know, then you have 20% of those people that you know, clicked over to buy that didn't buy. Uh, and then of course you can do other neat things like build a cart abandonment sequence or a cart retargeting campaign for all those cart abandonments. Um, that's a little bit more advanced. We can get to that in some other tutorials down the road. But for now, this is just keeping it simple. We'll keep it at 100. So everyone that lands on this page, 10% buy, and they all complete the order form. But that's basically how you start adding products for sale, is that you set a sales page and that you put in the product information. It's very, very simple. Then you add the price, add the conversion, and of course, you, uh, you add the cost, refunds, and everything else to go with it, and Giru automatically simulates and does all the math for you. 
So as you can imagine, if you have a business idea and you're thinking about selling something, you want to, you know, have bikes made for you from a supplier in China, and they're going to cost $77.80 each per bike. And you're going to sell those bikes for $1.99. And you want to see if you can make traffic from Facebook work at a dollar per click. You can model that in three minutes and Giru will tell you, nope, you're not going to make a profit here because a $77 cost with your 5% conversion or whatever you set the conversion rate to uh, is not enough profit if you're only going to sell those bikes at $199. And of course, Giru will automatically calculate for you the total expenses with your product cost, if it is a physical product or something that has an actual cost. Uh, or maybe, maybe you have a digital product but it has fulfillment costs as far as maybe you pay a coach or you pay someone to do like a 30 minute call with somebody and that's part of them buying an online course, but it does cost your company money to you know pay that person to do that little call. Well, you could add that to product cost and then that would be calculated and added to reports and all the numbers uh, based on what it would cost to fulfill that product even if it's digital. Of course, if it's physical, and you have shipping and all these other things, then you can put that into product cost as well. And of course, Giro will account for that when it calculates your profit, revenue, and everything else. But that's how you start selling products and services inside a model that you're building, and of course, be able to simulate and calculate those numbers.